I am audible. Am I audible? Am I audible? So now you hold the microphone in the hand or in the collar of the shirt and the neck. dimension of the subject. I will try to avoid the repetition but still I am starting. This is only some other person's friends are there who cannot understand Bengali. Let me be this part for them. Let me start. Specifically from one angle. Why temple destruction? Both by the Christian evangelists and by the Islamic fundamentalists. Before starting that, let me quote one line from Mohakal Kotha, page 74 recorded by the disciple on 25th November 1966. I hope I am audible. Oder inarmost khobor ami jani, jodir mathai mote paachti okkhor I H I N D U Hindu. In other place, this place, what is telling? I know their innermost circle. They are very much afraid about the word H I N D U. Very much afraid. In one place, Mahakal has told. In English it will be the term H-I-N-D-U, Hindu, is an enigma to them, is alarming to them, They're very afraid of it, very afraid of it, very afraid of it, it is an enigma, enigma means it is very myster mysterious, not only mysterious, this is alarming to Let me discuss a bit with the Mahakal statement, then I will go to the other subject. Uh, subject. What is enigma? Remember, those who are the scholars in Quran, scholars in Bible, biblical scholars, what is the level of their wisdom? In Quran, I have wrote great. Have you read? In Bible, have you read Bible? Bible I read. There is a chart, is a regimentation, is a, you do it, you do not do it. This is a doctrine. You do it and don't do it. Do, a chart of do's and a chart of don't do. Don't. Chart, regimentation. And in no place there is arguments. A 
follower a disciple is not allowed to ask questions if you ask questions you are a non believer you have no right to be non believer to disbelieve what is in quran or in uh, bible you will be punished and that punishment may be stone throwing or hanging or in for killing killing you this is the biblical text advice and the quranic text advice and in quran or bible can you imagine there is text of chemistry text of medicine text of surgery text of metallurgy text of logic text lock this text of economy finance text of the science of administration text of text of astrophysics our religious text vedas upanishad vedanta these are the treasure houses of all these subjects which is essential for a human society a human society and a human solution to progress to proceed they are all absent in quran or in bible and clear quran or bible has come from a lips of a particular human being a doctrine a doctrine for regimentation to create an army to create an empire christians followed it to make their empire throughout the world and disallowing others to live in this world killing others and islam use swords in one hand quran in other hand killing others all the disbelieving disbelievers non believers conquering their land raping the ladies of those areas looting their wealth raping their land land for allah this is the history of islamic invasions have you ever heard hindus has conquered other lands in the south east asia where still now the hinduism in different forms is still living their culture their temple still living in far burma thailand malaysia indonesia java sumatra vietnam cambodia laos still now survive was this land conquered by our persons our forefathers who went there in form of traders did they conquer with sword or gunpowder or did they kill their people did those people there no no and whatever historians seen the swarm of buddhism they tell buddhism is a new religion absolutely wrong buddha is a part of hinduism and whatever buddhism spread up to major in area 2000 2000 to 2.5000 years back and even to the north central asia up to up to mongolia and specifically up to japan other islands far east asia these were all primed with buddhism from before before there are all areas with hindu sanatani culture with idol worship all these areas and in this primed land prepared land prepared by hinduism by sanatan those areas buddhism went with new language new expression of our old religion of sanatan buddhism itself has nothing new nothing new which is not in sanatan not in hinduism 
And what about the university, so-called Buddhist university, Nalanda? Nalanda was initially a Hindu university, created by our Hindu kings, supported by Hindu villages surrounding them, who are funding and supplying food to these universities for the teachers and the 10,000 students who came there from different parts of Asia. All Hindu villages and Hindu kings. Subsequently, when Samrat Ashok was a Hindu family, himself converted to Buddhism, these structures was ruled by the Buddhists, Buddhist, Buddhist monks and Buddhist teachers. No problem. Again, after Samrat Ashok, again our kings became Hindu. They went back to Hindu, Hindu fold again for a period. It was governed by the Hindu priests and Hindu, nourished by Hindu kings and surrounding villages were supplying food for the students. Till the period of late 12th century, when the Islamist invaders came here, Bhakti Archangel to destroy, to burn this massive university containing lakhs of textages, lakhs of volumes. And what the communist historians are trying to justify that, they are justifying, they are justifying communist historians are coming to are trying to justify the Muslim vandalism, Islamist vandalism in India. They justify. They tell that they are absolutely silent. In thousand years, more than 50, 60 crores Hindus have been killed. Lakhs of temples have been destroyed. And the Islamist and this communist historian has no voice against them, no criticism. And they justify that once upon a time, Hindu kings, Hindu rulers, Hindu warriors destroyed Buddhist structures. And they mention that one time some Hindu killed Buddhists, killed Jains. Let me go into that text area. What is their argument? I am coming to that area. That area. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. With much effort, the communist historians has been able to find out a single reference of a Hindu king giving order of killing Buddhists and only from Sri Lanka. And that reference, that book was written recently not at the time of their alleged criminal incident. And they are mentioning one, and this book has come from a Buddhist scholar of Sri Lanka of recent age. Allegedly, in that book, it is written that one Hindu king of Pushamitra Shungo of 2nd century BC, before Christ, he passed an order offering prizes to the persons who will bring to him the heads of the Buddhist monks. This is the only literature available of killing, allegedly killing Buddhist monks. But this is only mentioning an order not the fact of killing 
and not even this is the literature of the period of second century bc this is the period this is the written in the british period allegedly by some buddhist scholar and this community can you imagine the proportion how many crores of hindus have been killed by the islamists and is there any real example solid example solid document of a buddhist monks being killed by the hindu kings hindu heroes no only a book claiming to be of the period of second century bc that is from now 2500 years back but the book is written recently in the british period by a buddhist scholar of sri lanka they think this is part of history see the things of proportion only one record alleged record maybe a manufactured false record think of proportion and by this record they are justifying that islamists the killings of crores of hindus by the islamists this communists are justifying the islamists genocide genocide of hindus by the islamists in this part portion think of the sense of proportion they claim they are historians in another example i am telling you they claim the buddhist structures the buddhist temples was destroyed by the hindu kings and throughout the whole subcontinent of bharatvarsha only half a dozen example has been found think on the opposite side lakhs of hindu temples was vandalized by the islamist invaders think of proportion and they always mention that the nalanda was destroyed by the hindus but was it was it destroyed by hindus originally it was created by the hindu kings then occupied by the buddhist in the period of samrat ashok then again is going to the hands of the hindus and it was destroyed by the islamic invaders by by i have told by bukhtiyar khilji at the end of the 12th century and they are justifying that the communist scholar are justifying that and citing examples sense of proportion sense of proportion and ironically when this partition in india after transfer of power the railway station adjoining nalanda is named of that tyrant that criminal that man of genocide the islamist invader the bukhtiyar khilji it is named as bukhtiyar khilji how pathetic our mindset is can you imagine we are honoring a islamist invader who killed him. in that area lakhs of hindus and destroyed the biggest university of the universe of the world at that time and before that in the west of bharat many universities have been destroyed by them like toksha in today's west punjab in pakistan in today's pakistan and you can this history and are justifying that question i will i'll go for next part hmm. now i will go for another part i will and and now i will come to 
this part. Which part? And I, th I think I have given some new information beyond what I told in my last Bengali talk. Now, please begin your discussion. Yes, Achyo. Okay, but now we should. I have, I have discussed. I have told. Congress was the creation of British Robert Hume. And they always tries to keep the leadership in the hands of their British agents. All along. They never allowed Lal Bal Pal to come to a level. They never allowed C.R. Das or Madan Mohan Malaviya like that or Fapsum Sapsumas Chandra to take the leading position in Congress. Never. It's always reserve the leadership in the hands of the British agents like Nehru Gandhi. That was said for British. And even Muslim League I have told and Communist Party I have told repeatedly many times it is their British production. And all these parties are in their political agendas are serving the British interests. Very, very clever, very clever. All the, for the British interest, the concept of Bharat is very dangerous. For the foreign enemies who do not like to, like Bharat to come up, the concept of Bharat is dangerous. The idea that Bharat had a, is a very rich heritage, rich heritage in their literatures, in their Sanskrit literatures, or Vedic languages, Ved, Vedanto, and subsequently Hindu literatures, a huge treasure of all science subjects, which not. Physics, chemistry, mathematics, astrophysics, logic, economics, applied psychology, what not? Even spacecraft, science of spacecraft, Viman Vidya, which not. One European scholar has told, I have mentioned, no other country has been able to think over a thing, an idea, which is not already thought by a Bharatian in this, here in Bharat, in this India. I have mentioned a few days back, I quoted to Adhyar, it is very difficult for the British interest to accept that. We want to preach that India has no heritage, no bright history. They want always to preach that Ramayana Mahabharata is a story, not reality. Because only by that, they can create an infinity complex in the minds of the Bharatians. Only that, if they can create and maintain that mindset of the Bharatians, they will be in an easier position to, to rule this country, to continue their rule. And as these communists, Muslim leaguers, and Congress, the Sikhus, and the Nehruvians, are the agents of the British and the foreign masters, they are continuing the same idea, same project. During thousand years of Muslim rule in India, the Islamic historians, Muslim historians, they wrote some history volumes. Their ideas was to record the brilliance and supremacy of the Muslim rulers, done it. But by doing so, they have also recorded how their rulers has, been, has killed in millions Hindus, 
raped in lakhs, millions, and looted the Hindu temples, destroyed the Hindu temples. They have recorded it. Because they thought by that they can record the might of their might and supremacy of their of their kings, of their of their rulers, of their heroes. And they have justified that Islam believes in monotheism, Akeshwar Badi. Therefore, they are justified to destroy other idols and the place of that idols, the temples. They justified that. And subsequently, also British, British, when they came to this India, British, British initially Christians came in first and second century AD and they landed in the western coast of Bharat in Kerala and Goa. They, they used violence there. Saint Javier like those persons who sing there. These persons. They occupied some land by force, by gunpowder. <laughs> Destroyed our temples. Raped our <coughs> mothers, our brothers, our daughters, sisters, and killed our forefathers. But resistance was there. They could not proceed further. They have to stop them. And they proceeded to Europe, America, all those areas. Those were the lands of the idol worshippers. Before that, there was the massive temples with idols in all parts of Europe and all parts of America, both now South, Middle and Middle and North. They killed in millions the Aborigines, destroyed their temples. And the, and the migrants from the Europe, they colonized all these lands in America. They are the butchers. They are the tyrants. They claim to be civilized today. And subsequently, they thought that such violence and invasions is no more needed. They have already created 150 Muslim Christian countries. They turned into trade, industry, science, economy, all these, financing, all these things. Now the Christian land, the, 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 the rich people, the rulers, the emperors, they started business, trade, industry, all these things. They switched over from tyranny to trade, business and industry. But Islamists, they continued their old technique of raping, destroying the temples, killing others, all these things. Only recently, they have thought that continuation of this funding of, of the terror, Islamic terrorists will be no more helpful. They are changing now the strategy. But whatever they have done during thousand years of their rule in this Bharatpur, in different parts, looting, not lacks of temples, destruction, raping and killing, all these things, they have been recorded. And they justified that, communists also justified that, communist historians. And then came the communists, communists themselves. And how they came in the picture, comes at the production in India, communists at the production of the British. And here, all the British followers, either Muslim leaguers or Gandhi Nehru's or the communists, had got a common purpose. They are all dictatorial in their characters. They are all the followers of what the British are the Islamic histor historians, then British historians has written. When after partition, Nehru came to power. He saw the history textbooks written by R.C. Mojumdar or Jodhana Shorka like that. In those volumes, there is glorious chapters of 
the Indian history and heritage. heritage. If that is taught in the university schools and colleges, then the history or real history of Bharat will be known to the students of this country. Then that will be that will give rise to high, rise to nationalism in this country. But nationalism, Bharatian nationalism, is not good for Gandhi Nehru. Because nationalism was not good for British interest. It is not good for the Islamists. It is not good for the communists. In India, the nationalism to a large extent means glorification of our Hindu history heritage. Our glorification of the our Hindu heroes. Ones who fought against the British, before that, who fought against the Islamists, and even before that, who fought against the foreign invasion. Even our heroes who expanded their cultural impact to the Far East, the Pacific region, to Malaysia, Indonesia, Java, Sumatra, Japan. Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, not to speak of our Thailand, Thailand, Burma, etc. Even to Central Asia, even to even to West up to Mediterranean, singing those songs, that is not acceptable to this Congress and Muslim leaders and the Congress. And after when Nehru came to power, his, his agenda was to eliminate the volumes of R.C. Mujumdar and John Dasarka like that. He brought communists and placed them in different academic positions and told them, ordered them to write new history. And keeping the history volumes of the Muslim period unchanged, history of India written by the Britishers during the British period and though in the British period in their history they are our heroes like Sutra Shain, Bhagat Singh, Khudiram is narrated as terrorist. They did not wish to change those narratives. They, want, they told that any change of these narratives is destruction of history. Change of history is not good. They were instructed by their foreign masters and so on, also by Nehru, to keep the history as such without changing, without correction. Because destroying Bhagat Singh, Khudiram, probably like as terrorist, serves the purpose of Gandhi, serves the purpose of Nehru and Muslim leaders. After partition, Muslim leaders enter into Congress and Communist parties. Think and only task added for the Communist student is to sing the song of Gandhi Nehru, to narrate in the volumes of history that Gandhi is the sage who brought freedom for our country. This narrative written by the communist historians and write the song of for Nehru to glorify Nehru and glorify Indira throughout the world and describing Nehru as a talented man, is the founding father of modern India, founding father of planning commission of foreign policy, all these things, all false narratives. Narrating he is a man of science, man of intellect, all these things. And communist history have glorified Gandhi, glorified Nehru, glorified Indira. And communist historians are not only paid by this Gandhi Nehru, Indira, also paid by the <coughs> foreigners who are the enemies of this Bharat. Also Islamists. So there are 50 Muslim countries, 
some of them very rich they are funding this come this system and many christian countries are very rich they have got their aspiration still today converting segments of this bharatvarsha into christianity you see teriza was their agent teriza was the conduit is the way of transferring money wealth ruble dollars and pounds through him to different peripheral areas like manipur mizoram nagaland kerala and central india all these tribal areas and those money is being used for conversion conversion to christian can you imagine 200 years of british rule could not convert any area of this bharatvarsha into a christian majority area but after partition in last 70 years north east india mizoram manipur nagaland all these states have become christian majority and the cookies who are infiltrating from barma is being funded by this christian missionaries and this activity of the missionaries like teresa is glorified by the communist students backed by the gandhi dev dynasty because communists are frustrated in 101 years of their existence party existence they are not in the pathetic condition they have not been able to plant the root of communism here in india they are in collaboration with islamists vatican and and the communist masters outside and to destroy this bharat destroy this bharat and they are helping each other helping each other, mutual mutual helping each other so that communist can take away a chunk of this country islamist can take away a chunk of this country and christians can take away a chunk of this uh, land chunk of country think i have given you an example if there is a big is a big bull big bull big bull is a vegetarian eats some grass walking on the forest be use health a tiger or a single wolf cannot kill a bull <laughs> if to kill a big bull it needs about 6 to 7 tigers together or 6 to 7 lions together or about 50 wolves together they attack the single bull together they kill them and they take each one a bulk of the flesh of the body of this big bull india is a big mass it's a big land big country huge treasure huge oil huge grand like real land huge mines communist want a part of it to create their empire islamists want a part of it again they have already two pakistans before their afghanistan and also christians they want a part of this land in a new christian country that's why they are in they are in close collaboration and gandhi nehru they have lost the central power political power in many states also all these forces congress nehru nehru gandhi communists islamists and christian lobby all are in friends all are in togetherness close cooperation to throughout any national sports or in the state or in center throughout nationalism bharatiya nationalism they are acting up they are acting up i'm i'm giving you a single example mahakal in one place has told that jinnah was successful 
only because there was help of Congress. Without Congress help, Jinnah could not take Pakistan, could not get Pakistan. Indirectly, he has told clearly, indirectly, it is Congress who created Pakistan. And this Pakistan creation was needed by Gandhi to make Nehru the Prime Minister. To make Nehru the Prime Minister, his, his uh, political son, to make him the Prime Minister, he helped British to divide this country. Clear? And think, think of that. How step by step Gandhi helped Islamic fundamental to rise in this country, step by step. Think. Long back, during this first great war, he was planted in India as a British agent. He used as a recruiter of soldiers for the British army. The British agent. Then he entered the Indian politics. Think of 1920, the Kilapath movement. By starting Kilapath movement, he introduced Islam in our political discussion. Islam became a part of the secular platform of Congress. The Kilapath became an issue, which is an extra geographical subject, became an Indian issue. And by that, the Muslim leaders, Islamists, got placement in Congress platform. And when the Islamist Kilapathis killed thousands of Hindus in Kerala and other parts of India, in name of Kilapath movement, Gandhi remained silent. Then he never uttered a single word. Then 1964, and when Jinnah, in during this Kilapath movement, Kilapath resolution, Jinnah told Gandhi, Gandhi, don't do it. They are bringing a communal issue into Congress platform. All objected. Annie Beshen, Chitranjan Das, Rajpodra, Balgat, all the disciples of Tilak, all objected. But this fanatic, to start the Islamic interest introduced this Kilapath resolution. And then in 47, Gandhi Shaw and and actually as Gandhi did not allow proper placement of Jinnah, Jinnah was compared to leave Congress. Gandhi never allowed a proper man, a proper honor and placement. He thought the Congress is his own property, dictatorial, a fanatic. And his always idea was to create the throne of this country for Nehru. That's why he step by eliminated everyone, eliminated Siyadas, eliminated Jinnah, eliminated Shubhastu. They are the most intellectual persons. Let me be very clear. If you read the writings of Lal Bal Pal, Lal means Lalajpot Rai, Balmahat Tilo, Bipin Chandra Pal, Aurobindo, Chitranjan Dash, Udan Mohan Malaviya, Savarkar, Amitkar, even Udan Mohan Malaviya, they are intellectually far superior. Even Jinnah, far superior. Gandhi. But British very carefully helped Gandhi to eliminate all these persons. And in return, Gandhi helped British to divide India. And Gandhi also benefited. By division, he could make Nehru the Prime Minister of this country. And 
Akal is absolutely right. It is Congress who created this Pakistan. Absolutely right. And I am I'll stop here only putting a single example. How many minutes this? Think of nine divisive politics, divisive politics to create divisions, divisive politics in the backbone of Gandhi Nehru dynasty. In the backbone. I'm telling you, I have Gandhi part, I have told a little. Now, coming to recent part. Think of 1979 8. Indira Gandhi out of power. In center, Jonathan government running. They are in Punjab, Jonathan Akali. Front is ruling. Gandhi, Indira, and Sanjoy encouraged and helped Khilapati movement. Khilapati. Khalistani movement in Punjab. Khalistani movement. And what is, what is Khalistani movement? Khalistani movement is nothing but a movement, a Pakistan movement, a religious fundamentalist movement, a fanatic movement, like that for Pakistan, from within Punjab, to take away West East Punjab, which is in this Bharat, to take away this land, as independent Khalistan. And today I have written Khalistanis are nothing but Islamists only with the uniform of a Sikh. Khalistanis are nothing but Islamists with the uniform of a Sikh. Let me, what is Sikhism? Sikhism, Sikhism is nothing but Hinduism. Is it? It's a weaponized Hindu, Hindu, Hindu practice. Think of the Islamic era when the Muslim invaders were raping our mothers and sisters. At that time, some of the Hindu families and their leader, Sikh leader, Sikh religious leaders, introduced Sikhism. What is this practice? The senior most boy of the family we keep hair, turban, and a small sword with him. This is the practice. This is to protect Hindu girls, Hindu mothers, from the hands of the Islamists. This is Sikhism. And the Sikh boy in the family of the Hindu. Sikhism is not a different religion. And subsequently, after partition, a group of people backed by the Islamists, backed by the Pakistanis, created a slogan for of, of, of Khalistan. Khalistani slogan. And those were backed by the Sikhs in Canada. And there, Canada, the presence of Sikhs the many centuries in Canada. That's a big history, you know. And financially and, and morally, they are being backed from Canada. And today's Canada, the ruling political party, is getting the support of this Khalistani group there. And there is some troubles, you know this. And they were, and this Khalistani group was being helped by. Indira Gandhi and Sanjay Gandhi in 1708. They encouraged Khalistanis. And at the end, these Khalistanis became Frankenstein. And Indira Gandhi was murdered in 1984 by the, in the hands of Khalistanis. And even on this, they have not learned the, the things. They have not learned the message. And when this Nehru Gandhi's Sonia and his sons and daughters is out of power. They are so, so, so hankering after power. They are helping the Khalistanis. So with their cooperation, they can come to power. Think of Rajiv Gandhi. Rajiv Gandhi once was backing 
the movement in Jaffana, that is the of the Hindus. Hindus there are tortured, no doubt. There is a violent group of Prabhakaram, weaponized group. He thought for a long period the Madras is out of hand of Congress. He wanted to take help of the Prabhakaram group to conquer again the Madras. He once helped Prabhakaram. Back, but in one time, Rajiv betrayed Prabhakaram. And the result was Rajiv was killed. Though actually, in that killing of Rajiv Gandhi, there is a Congress hand who has been benefiting. I have discussed clearly about one year back, also written in my volume. In Gandhi murder, there is a Congress hand who has been, who has been benefiting. In Rajiv Gandhi murder, there is a Congress hand who has been benefiting. In Indira Gandhi murder, there is a Congress act. In Rajiv Gandhi murder, there is a Congress act. That's why Congress has never been in a position to bring up these investigation reports. And this, this politics of division and murdering even the family members is in the DNA of them. They are hankering after power and power, political power. And now they are helping the Khalistan issue. They have not learned anything. And they are collaborating, these Nehru Gandhi families are collaborating with the Islamists, Khalistan issue. Here, communists and Christian lobbies. All these separate institutionists, their common character, they are intolerant about the words Bharat, and they are demanding caste censures. It's a way to divide further this country. They're all, even at the cost of divisions of this country, they want to regain power in some part of this country. They want political power. Political power at the help at the, is their topmost priority, not the service to the nation. We will let this country be destroyed and divided, but power is in their topmost priority topmost priority. They are hankering after power. Power and power is their main agenda. Power and power. Their political power will give them the scope of looting this country. And I have written today the Ram Mandir movement was, in, was a step forward for our colonial decolonization. Placement of statue of Netaji in the Kortok Gopal is a decolonization in our history textbooks. And the use of Bharat in what in place of India in all NCRT textbooks is a step towards our intellectual decolonization. Let me stop here today. Any questions? Yes. Except Asha, all Northeast states are converted from traditional faith to the Christianity. Yes. And here is a notorious religion. And others, 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 others also report that. Through him, through her, the money was transferred. And this Teresa was placed by Jyoti Bosch, Communist Party of Bengal, CPA. CPA. You will never see Jyoti Bosch and Communist Party of um, CPA has ever praised Ramakrishna Mission or Bharat Seva from, from Goa for so many human activities. But they are freezed. They danced in joy in Calcutta streets. When Teresa was Nobel laureate, is not only as evangelist. Christian evangelists. And when given Bharat Ratna, you are in power, in power, in power, in Delhi. Notorious. British indirectly tried to keep country weak by promoting Islam, Islam in gloves. Not only, Bhagavad Babu, let me, let me be clear in this area. 
British, in this period of 200 years, they encouraged the Sunnis to survive more. Sunnis. Because Sunnis are more, in India, Sunnis are more militant. Siyaj was not in the good book of the British. <coughs> and Nehru, in Nehru and Gandhi's good book, was Sunnis, not Siyaj. And all then disliked Sufis. Disliked Sufis. They want more fundamentalist groups. British or Gandhi Nehru, more fundamentalist, more anti Hindu group, fundamentalists, more terrorist groups. Both Gandhi and Nehru were engaged by British. Please make it yes. Any other, any other questions? Maybe for the question that's in the room. Thank you. Let me stop here. Let me keep any questions. Please write here. I can try your answer, try to answer, respond in future. Let me stop here. Thank you. Good night. <coughs>